Hi everyone, this is Big Mama. I wanted to bring my second journal to you for the month of March. On the Dear Julie Julie Challenge this month, she had us marching two by two. And so what we were supposed to do is make elements for two journals. They could be two journals that did not look at all alike, but we had to use the same kind of elements in it. So if we made a flip up type of pocket, then we had to make them for two different journals. So I had already filmed my first journal and I promised I'd come back and show you my second one. Just finished it last night, so I hope all the glue is dry and we won't find too many things and I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot to do that. So here you go. This one I use Julie's Digital that is called Saving Spring that she introduced this month. And so because there is some beautiful yellow flowers that she had that, with dried flowers, I chose to use a handkerchief that had the yellow trim to it and also a white one that had some tatting on it. And this is embroidery flower and then I used an applique over the top. And then on the spine, I went ahead and used this because I wanted to have some dangly and the lace itself had the dangly and then the napkin goes on around to the back with the metal um, edges here that I glued down. And I use to glue these on, um, it is a tile glue that you find, I get it at Hobby Lobby where they have the mosaic tile pieces they have glue there and so I use that and glue these on to make them really durable so um, this is an antique button that I have that I put on there to match the flowers on the front and then I tied I took here on the side I took the ribbon through here two pieces of ribbon and then tied them in a bow and then took the bow and sewed it to where you don't have to untie it. You just take and put the loop up over the button here on the top. And so with no further ado, here is the inside of my journal. So I made here a pocket in the front and I used um, a crocheted, I'd call it a placemat, but it was a lot smaller than a placemat. And so, um, I guess you would put it maybe under on a dresser to put under a lamp or something, but it got whacked in half and now it's a crocheted pocket. And so it has a new identity. And so I had this card that I put the word inspired on with butterflies because we're going to have flowers in here and with flowers you have to have butterflies. And so then I always like to, I try to anyway, put a little piece of the tracing paper or parchment paper in here to kind of protect the first page. And so this is Julie's Digital where she and her husband had got to go on vacation. She picked some wildflowers because Julie's kind of a wild hippie girl. And <laughs> don't tell her I said that, whatever you do. But she has all of these flowers that she had pressed, these dried flowers. And so she has some of her old ephemera that she had laid the flowers on and had taken pictures. And when I use my copying machine, I can't do it all the way to the edge. And so I always have a white trim around. And I didn't want to cut the paper down. I like the journal to be a little bit uh, more substantial. So what I did was I picked out my papers that I was going to use for my scrapbooking paper. I had a Tim Holtz paper that I had and I like to tear the front off of the back and so um, I had done that and then I just went around and used some of my scraps off of that and put around the edge to cover up the white. And then I had lace that I like to tear the lace so that it has a really, really rough edge. And so I roughed up the edge there, and this is the back side. I printed front and back so that I would have not a white page, but I'd also have some of her digital here to be able to write. And one of the ladies that came last year to my house, uh, YouTube girls from Julie's group, 
Terry came from London and she brought some straw paper. And so this is some of her straw paper. And so what I did, it was big. So instead of cutting it down, I went ahead and just fold it over the extra piece. And so it's got a flip up area for more journaling space. Uh, okay. So then I have tissue paper here. We were supposed to use napkin. And so the napkin I had had a lot of the flowers that Julie had dried. And so they also had some yellow birds. And so I put them on here. And then when I was hitting it with the heat gun, kind of got a little bit burnt. Uh, oh, that's an accidental grunge. So I'm leaving my accidental grunge in there. But uh, that actually, I scorched the paper. And I had talked about this before, how the sheet of paper is actually this wide. And so instead of trying to figure out or turn it sideways, I kind of like having it where I have two pieces, lay them on top of each other, get the dimension here for the page. And so this is the hangover. I got a hangover. And so it was also longer. And so what I do, I flipped up the bottom here and made a little pocket. And then I have some old ephemera that was just really cool. And it also has the receipt. And I like that it has still how much money they spent. I think this was back in, yep, 1929. No, 1919 or 29. It could be. That ink pen might be. It could be a shaky hand. That could be a 19. So the napkin has also butterflies on it. But see, that's napkin. And I put a little bit of napkin here on my tab. And then the other half flipped up. And so I did here where this flips down, so that's that extra piece. But I also added an envelope just to give it some interest. This wasn't one of her things we had to do. And so there's the envelope upside down, glued down. But then what I did is the envelope opens up so you've got some more writing space. <laughs> Can you see me now? All right. And I'm kind of trying to embrace turning that paper sideways. Mm. It's not working for me. <laughs> I, I'm going to... I'm going to try and do it, but... I do like it when the lines, I am enough not normal. I need some normal. And then a dear friend of mine gave me a Tim Holtz kick, the kit. No, maybe it's not. Yeah, it says Timmy on there, hodgepodge book. And this was in it. And I thought, oh, how perfect. And so I just put um, wonky folded up paper in there. And then I also have a little... This was in with Julie's ephemera for the kit. And I have a tag that has some more of the napkin that's inside there. Sometimes I get so embarrassed, it's like, I don't know why you guys are watching this video. But I'm hoping that it's like I'm setting the curve, you're feeling normal after you watched it, because you're like, oh, I ain't none like her. So anyway, ledger paper. That is Willoughby. I call him my woofer pig. My daughter just came in the front door. That's the bark for my daughter. So I just want you to know. Yeah, that's her. I also had this book. And luckily it was already falling apart. And so I thought this is just perfect to put in here. So uh, because she had her wildflowers. So I put that in here. And then I took shorthand in school. I thought, well, that's kind of cool to add some shorthand. And then some more paper to write on, ledger paper. You can never have too much. I guess that's called graph paper. Uh, and then I have some of this. And we were to make a flip, um, a corner tuck flip. So this is a corner. This tucks. This is part of her ephemera. I glued it down on cardboard and then cut it out and then also put some uh, glossy accent on it. But then this, 
with the napkin flips up and you can do some writing on there and we were to make a hidden journaling card so this is the ephemera picture that we have here and then on the back i put some paper and i did it both ways just in case i could not embrace it going the wrong way i thought well i can turn it and then i can embrace it but um, it says create flower arrangement of the month and that was out of the flower and garden book and so that's actual 1962 i'm still using that one for julie and then this opens up and you've got a journaling space in there all right so we were to make a center so this is where the center of the signature is and you take this pocket and you put it in there you sew in your signature and then you fold that over and you glue it down and so that is she had um, the postcard style page that's got four on it so there's the other two and so then what i did for my inserts in it i had some antique postcards and so those go into the pocket yeah i think i remember that i could sit those to the side and come back and find where they belong and then this is an old napkin that i found and or a hanky and um so this is my cloth pocket or fabric pocket i don't get none of the words right but i try to fix it try to call it the right thing so you won't be wondering what it is and this is the Zorro card that she has us do because it goes shh, shh, shh. I like doing that Julie does that too okay so anyway <laughs> moving right along so here is a tag just using some scraps on the table and this is one of the flowers that she had in her uh, dried flowers and so I thought that was cool and had it in one of my books and then I also online, I back when I very first started doing this, a lot of people had freebies and I don't remember whose this was, but I did get this freebie and it has just a little paper in there for you to journal on. And I thought that that went really, really cool in here with the bugs and everything because you can have bugs with flowers. They propagate on my, is that? I shouldn't try too big a word. You guys will never know what I'm trying to come up with. Or you can have a good hee-haw over the fact I got it wrong again. All right. So I did a little bit of splattering with my coffee. I am so sorry about the dog. <laughs> I don't know how to edit him out. I'd have edited him a long time ago. So here's some more of the pretty flowers. And... And here's some more of her flowers. So now we can identify them. And uh, he's a precious dog. I let him live. <laughs> and then here, I know where this was advertisement in that um, home and garden, or uh, flower and garden. And so then just put the napkin on here, but it also opens up and a dear friend of mine i call her my dear friend i hope she calls me her dear friend too but um susan had done a bunch of papers and stuff and she had sent me some happy mail and believe me i was so happy to get all of these things that she had done and so then this is another one of those pages that where it was longer and so i just flipped it up and made the pocket I turned the page sideways. There's the yellow paper that has some washi on it. And then another pocket. And again, some of that old antique ephemera. wonder if this one tells me a better date. Ah, it is not 19. It is 29. So, there you go. They were a little bit more accurate there. And then on this one, I have a waterfall where it 
the waterfall goes down like that with some scraps of paper and some old ledger. So there's your waterfall pages. And, and then here's some more of the napkin. Some more of this wonderful straw paper. And that's the end of the first signature. If you guys want to go to the bathroom, I've got two more signatures. Hopefully I won't take that long. But if you need to take a break, take one now. Okay. So here's the second one. Are you back? Okay. So I love the fact that some of this paper has this um, perforation. Back when we used to put it through the printer, had to have these on there. So I just flip them over and then glue them on and use the gold pen on the holes. And it reinforces the edge and just looks pretty cool. And went around here on turning the page. Oh, this was... I actually some that I pulled off and glued on here. This wasn't on that page. And so went around the edge of Julie's paper again with the scraps. And this was the a piece of paper in the front of a book. And here's some more of her flowers that she had. My yellow bird. And I'm trying to go a little bit faster so that you guys won't consider me robbing your time. I love the... If you get a chance to watch uh, Grungy Girl Lori B, she did some really good grunging techniques and taught us her secrets. And so I kind of went crazy on that in this journal with all of the water and the inks and it's a lot brighter than I'm used to but oh I had fun. Here is some of Julie's ephemera in the kit that you can turn into a um, envelope and so I did it and turned it into an envelope and so did in signatures so that the top of the envelope is a double pocket but here's the back and I have trouble putting the ephemera in at the spine and so I just cut the back edge here and then I can put the ephemera in like this and I also covered the inside with the green painters paper and that reinforced it and so here it's a pocket but you could also pull it out the other way I'm not going to try and then some more of the straw paper ledger. And then we were to make a stacking pockets. And so I had learned watching the Kathleen Moyers videos to do a peekaboo pocket. And so that's what I did here. So I laid the two pockets together to where this one goes here. I used some of my antique buttons on the top corner and this is some advertisement that was in the Flower and Garden magazine. And so that one slides in this way. And then this pocket here in the back is actually glued to the top, the back side of this top one. So that it then makes one big pocket like that. And so... I thought that that just turned out really, really good. That's the evening prim primrose, in case you guys needed to know. And you can write on the back. You can sing about the primrose with that music paper. And peekaboo pocket. Okay. Tuck it in a little bit better. Center. And some more pa paper. No, put in there. I can never get these right. I'm <laughs> we do the flip flop, and you take and you glue that down, and you have a little gusset, and you glue it. But by the time I'm done gluing it in and everything, I blood I, <laughs> I press that gusset out to where I'm I done got rid of my gusset, and so it is like a layered stack more than a flip flop. 
I keep working on it. I'm not going to give up yet. So this is a where you tear the pocket. Well, this is a tuck. This is a double tuck in the corner. And there's, don't you wish your time card looked that pretty? My, this is a time card. My time card, not so pretty. And then there's another antique button. I guess when they're as old as me, they're antiqued. Okay, next page. Here is the other part of that envelope. And so we were to put in three tags. So I got an itty bitty one here. And so put those tags in and added uh, out of one of the flower books that I have. Part of a napkin. And then we were supposed to make what she calls tattoos, is where you take and you rubber stamp on um, deli paper or tracing paper and then you glue it onto the page. And so this is an Emily Dickens quote and also a butterfly off of the napkin. And some more of the page from that book. I figured since it's already been ripped apart, I better use it. And this is her digital. And I again, I trimmed it with the scraps of paper that I had. And ta-da, we are down to the last one. This won't last more than a half hour, I hope, for your sake. And so I trimmed it with some of the papers that I picked out because I would be using them. And the yellow bird. I'm not looking up to see if you guys are getting a good view of this journal. I hope that you are. I grungied. <laughs> I really, I grungied. And if I hadn't grungied enough, I grungied some more. I was grungy on. And then in my quilt scraps, I took and put this here and some antique buttons up on it. And this is a flip because we had to make the waterfall flip. And so these pages are doubled over. And so that's the waterfall flip. And I used this to trim out this side because I, it was, I didn't want to cut that, that. Oh, that is just too pretty and put a little tiny button up there at the top. And so this is a top tuck. And I like making my top tucks using the envelopes. And so what I did here, this is, um, again, some of the stuff that Susan had sent me. She had put some paint on the tag. And so I went ahead and added the napkin to it to tie it in with here. But she had painted that orange. And then, so that goes in there. but this is the tuck. And this is an old antique greeting card that I had. And up here at the top, it said, get well. Well, I didn't want to put get well in there. So I put blessed instead because you got you're blessed when you get well and so then on the inside it was signed mom and dad and so i just covered up the get well sentiments and put that piece of paper there with some washi and then you can also open it up and this is some journaling space that you can use so that was just an idea i'm sure that it's been done a thousand times over but that's what i did with this old antique <laughs> you know, when I say old antique, it was probably in my lifetime, but I know that I can't go to the store and buy it now. And so I thought, oh my gosh, those colors just go so well together. And I love the fact that it's got some of the flowers that she had dried. Okay, some more paper. And I have some more of this. And 
try to move faster for you through the this will be the slower pages when someone writes in it but for right now and got them all right and so i have this where you took and stained it up and put the napkin on it and some of her digital is on here and then i took tracing paper and made pocket i want to hold that up here so you can see it's got a garden and then at the top it says birds in the garden i thought well that is just pretty snazzy so that's why the pocket is see-through so you can see the little fountain in the garden and then on the other side that piece of paper the tracing paper is a pocket here that i put some lace on and then i had some more antique ephemera that i just thought went really well in there and this is uh, old enough if you guys would like to have a dog <laughs> he is a eight-year-old schnauzer and i call him a woofer pig because he woofs as you can hear and then he also buries things in my sofa and sounds like a pig when he's burying so he is a very rare breed he is the woofer pig and here we go some more pages to journal upon and I tell you what, until I watched some of these ladies grunging and doing things, I would have panicked over this being folded over or crinkling my paper and everything. And, but whew, well, how freeing it is to just be able to just make your mistakes and say, hey, that's on purpose. <laughs> Oh, thank you girls so much for teaching me how to embrace it. This is a layered belly band. And so here at the top, we were to also make a, a tag with a purpose. And so I kind of fudged on it because this is not a tag. This is more like a card with a purpose. I saw this on a scrap of paper I had and thought, oh, well, I have some yellow butterflies on uh, some wrapping paper. So I cut out the yellow butterfly, but then I open it up, and here is Julie's ephemera package. And so I just fold up some paper that you can do a legacy letter to a loved one in, hide that in there, and then it hides inside this which then hides inside that and you can also write on the index card and then the back of the tag here I put it in crooked oh okay so this is another one of the flowers that Julie has in here. At least it looked like it to me. And so this is the identification of that flower. In case anybody needs to know, <laughs> and you guys know, I, I cannot read English or speak it very well. And so if I was to try, I'm thinking this might be Latin. <laughs> that's what that flower is so all of you who speak latin and if this isn't latin and you go oh no that's english no i didn't get that far in school i guess because <laughs> right there i'm not even going to try to say it and so when i say that she has that flower okay can you can you see them there's a flower, there's a flower, and isn't that that flower? Looked it to me. So I'm just calling that a win. And so that's a journaling card there. And then I am putting this back in so you can see I left the wing of the butterfly up so that when you slide it in, it's got a stopper. 
So that's a butterfly stopper. And I love this back side of this page because we got a boog. We got a boog with the flowers. We love our boogs. All right, some more journaling, 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 journaling. And I don't know if all of you know who Bonnie is, <laughs> but Bonnie, when she came here in May and we had that little crafting together, that poor girl had gotten into some. <laughs> Poison Ivy. Bonnie is the one who started me making these videos. So Bonnie, this one's for you. I almost didn't use this page. I go, oh no, <laughs> Bonnie, this one's for you. Little Miss Poison Ivy herself. Weren't nothing funny about that poison ivy, was there? And so here I have a rusty pin, and I took just some scraps of thread and stuff and put on there and tied a little bow and have this. And so we were to make a fabric flip, and so I had this piece here. I love this lace. Mine, not again, perfect with this, but it went perfect with the rest of the book, and I'm throw it in there. And then, I know I could probably talk a whole hour on this. My husband had gone to an online auction and got me a whole bunch of paper to ephemera, and this letter was in here. And this letter, envelope, 1951, it is a letter to Mama. And so it does, it says, Dear Mother, that's Monday afternoon, dear mother. But she didn't stop there because she then has another one. Oh my gosh, mama. <laughs> so she's got another one that's in there. And so that is December the 8th, 1957. And then her sweet babies wrote to grandma, mama. And so they got their little letter in here. And so there's one of her sweet babies and then another one. And look how this has faded from being folded. It, that's natural. The, Big Mama didn't do that. No. And so there. And I love that she's got A's and G's. You, yeah, geez, that must be that she was good because I got all A's and G's on my report card. <laughs> I just love that. Gee, if I got an A, that would have been amazing. And so I made the letter envelope a pocket. Let me... Oh, I'll just put those in later. Yeah, I, don't... I owe you that much for hanging in here. So the letter is going to go in here, but I glued it down just on the three sides so that also the back side of it is a pocket. And I had this antique postcard. It's dated 19, copyright 1913. And I love what it says here. A friend is one who, knowing how bad you are, does not forget how good you are. And so I thought I'd put that in there behind Mama's letters. Aren't those letters just the sweetest thing? And that's the real thing. I didn't photocopy it. And some more. So we are down to the end of it, dear friends. And that's her, once again, her digital. And back here tissue paper and then I also did a slow stitch and made some little uh, suffet poofs and I didn't put the inside in so that they poof out like some of Julie's flowers and so I put those in there and that goes in the back pocket so our church is having a craft fair this weekend, and I hope to be able to sell this this weekend. Um, wish me luck, gals. I am a nervous wreck when it comes to selling my things because we don't just make our crafts, do we? 
it's like we're birthing a baby. Our creativity is just flowing away. And and then when it comes time to let it go, if, if we're making it for someone or a gift, that's one thing we already know ahead of time. But this is going out there. And I feel like I need to have adoption papers go with it because it was such a labor of love making it. And I put in all the antique ephemera. And I don't know if you see this. This here is some of uh, Penny Pudge's uh, seam binding that she dies up. But the edge kept fraying. And so I thought, well, I'll heat it with the... <laughs> I'm going to tell it, but I did. I heated it with uh, a lighter, and it. <laughs> I'm working at night. I should have went on to bed and done this in the morning, but it just like, <laughs> and I'm like, ah! I'm putting out the fire. I didn't want to set off the alarm. But then all that burnt edge, I'm like, oh, I better cut that off. I go, I. <laughs> I think I kind of like it. I mean, it goes with the burnt paper on the inside, right? So uh, I tell you, uh, let me know in the comments, should I, shouldn't I? But no, I am. So it's not, you just keep your opinions to yourself on that one. <laughs> yeah, I try, you know, I, I, I did tell myself be a little bit more normal this time. <laughs> And I was. This is normally Big Mama. I love you guys. I thank you so much for all the comments you leave. And like I said, it is like getting correspondence from you. It really does matter to me on a personal level to be able to communicate with you out there and to know that we crafters, we encourage each other. And I sure hope I can encourage you along the way. Thank you so much for taking time to watch this video. And I'm going to push the red button now. Bye-bye.